Thank you. So the scripture for this morning, it's actually 1 Peter chapter 5. Peter is a letter written by Peter to the church at large. Most of the letter he's talking to all the followers of Jesus. But then in chapter 5, he addresses a smaller group within the church. He, he speaks to pastors. He calls them elders, but it's the same thing. He speaks to pastors. So I want to ask everyone who is a pastor, an ordained pastor here this morning to stand up. Now, everyone, stay standing, stay standing, stay standing, stay standing. Because these four verses from 1 Peter 5 are, are really not for all of us. We get to hear, but these four verses are addressed to pastors. So listen to what Peter says to pastors. He says, to those who are elders among you, I appeal to you as a fellow elder and as a, a witness of the sufferings of Christ and as one who will share in the glory to be revealed, I, I appeal to you, be shepherds of God's flock, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you're willing, as God would have you be, not greedy for money, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to your care, but being an example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you all will receive a crown of glory that will never fade away. Amen? Amen. Go ahead, be seated. So the pastor who gave the children's message that day was a guy named Dwayne Kirkide. It was 37 years ago, but I still remember this children's message. It involved um, a dress shirt, a button, some thread, and a fair amount of behind-the-scenes planning. So I was eight years old, and this was Redeemer Lutheran Church in Colorado Springs. My dad was in the Air Force. Uh, we had just moved from Norfolk, Virginia to Colorado Springs, and we became members at Redeemer Lutheran Church, and there was a little school, and, and I, my brother and I went to school there. And Pastor Kirkide was our pastor. And that morning during the children's message, he was telling us about shepherds, how, how Jesus is like a shepherd, and a shepherd is... Somebody who takes care of sheep, and he asked, has anybody ever met a sheep in real life? And some little boy raised his hand and said, I saw a goat at the zoo once. A little girl raised her hand and says, I went to the zoo, and I saw an elephant. A little boy raised his hand and said, actually, elephants are the largest land animals, and they weigh like 15,000 pounds and can actually run 25 miles per hour. <laughs> you got to be careful when you ask questions in children's messages. Pastor Kirkite, he sees us getting nowhere, and so he, he tries to bring us together, and he says, have any of you all met a shepherd? No one has met a shepherd before. He said, well, shepherds takes care of sheep, and, and it's, it's, if, if a sheep were to go astray, a shepherd will go and, and bring them back to the flock, sort of like what happens uh, if you were to lose a button on your shirt. And this is when he really got all our attention because he started to, to pull on this little button here. And it just kept going and going and going. And, and this is the part what I mean that there was some behind the scenes preparations for this this children's message, this little communication with a bunch of fidgety kids on a Sunday morning at 8.15, that, that he had taken some time to rig this 
trick button up. That he didn't just go into his closet and grab a shirt. I don't know if it was him or his, his wife Elaine, but, but he had rigged this up. And, uh, and he said, you know what, some of you, you might be like this button. Something bad might happen to you and you might stop gathering with the church. You might stop worshiping and singing and praying and you might stop listening to God's word and you, you might do some things that you're ashamed of. You might get lost. And then, then he just started to reel this button back in. And it seemed like a magic trick at that time. And obviously, I, I know how he, he did it now. And, but to do it, I know he would have had to practice it. And so he, he probably sat in his living room or sat in his church office and he just practiced reeling this little button in just so he could share us a message about Jesus, about who he is and what he does for us. Some of the magic is worn off, but, but none of the mystery because he, he promised us. He said, no matter how far away you get, lost or stray, Jesus will find you and he'll give you a place. And I don't think he had any clue that that some of us might remember this for a lifetime. A simple picture of what Jesus does for us. The New Testament gives us a picture of the church, First Peter especially. Uh, and it's not a picture that we might be familiar with because the church in those days, in the earliest days, it wasn't identified with buildings or campuses or institutions of any kind. There, there were no Christian schools, no Christian universities, no professional church worker programs, no Christian lobbyists, no Christian bumper stickers, no Christian radio programs, just a bunch of followers of Jesus who got together in houses. The, the picture of the New Testament church we get is very different, but one thing seems to be consistent through the centuries. There's always been pastors. There's always been men called by Jesus, like Peter, and then later in the following generations called by Jesus through the church, pastors who, who pull us back to God and give us a place in the body of Christ. The New Testament gives us a picture of the Christian life. The Christian life is more than an individual with a personal relationship with God. Being a Christian is more than an individual who has a Christian worldview. Being a Christian, a follower of Jesus, is more than someone who has a certain set of moral values. To be a Christian, in part, is to have a pastor. Someone who's pulling for you. Giving you a place in the body of Christ. Pastor Kirkide was the first person I remember being mine my pastor. He was a really big guy. He, he would command attention when he came into the classroom at Redeemer Lutheran Church, to our school, to, to teach a confirmation class. And he would, he would fill the pulpit when he preached. And he had, he had receding hair and thinning hair and he did this big comb over. And when he would get really worked up preaching, he'd start to sweat. And his comb over would start to rise up like he was electrified with the Holy Spirit preaching about Jesus, a witness to the sufferings of Christ. Without any shame, with conviction. And there have been times in my life when I've been ashamed of the name of Jesus. And I didn't want to be identified as belonging to him and his people I was embarrassed about what people might think. But I always had this image of Pastor Kirkide 
who got up there week after week after week and told us the truth about Jesus. Pastors are called by a lot of different names in the New Testament. They're called elders and presbyters and overseers and ministers and stewards of the mysteries. But it's all the same job. It's all the same job to to speak the word of God, to be an example for the people of God, to pull you in and give you a place and a purpose in the body of Christ. And it's not just pastors. It's all these servants of God Christian parents and teachers and deaconesses and DCEs and music ministers and Christian mentors and friends, people who are living reflections of Jesus Christ to us who pull us in and tie us to the body of Christ. And they're just ordinary people like us. They're, they're normal, vulnerable, susceptible to life. Just like everybody else. I remember one time at Redeemer Lutheran School, we were in the gymnasium and a bird flew in to the gym through the double doors that lead to the parking lot. And it was a big bird. I don't remember what kind of bird. It was like pterodactyl sized. And it was flying around and we were all worked up. And Pastor Krukai comes in to check in on us and calm us down and eventually the bird flew out on its own and the only casualty that day was Pastor Kirkide's dress shirt. (laughs) That bird must have had a big breakfast. (laughs) It dropped a load right on his shoulder and it stained all the way down his arm. It's like the uh, flight attendant said on my flight last night about the overhead bin. Watch out, shift happens. <laughs> it took a, it took a while. <laughs> and it happens. It happens to to God's servants. Uh, we get stained just like everybody else. We gotta wade through a lot of people's crap. And I think in the service of God's people, that's part of the crown of glory that God's servants have, the stains that they bear. And we shouldn't be surprised at that because we serve a God who was crucified, who was willing to be stained so that we might be saved. In 1990. My family moved away. My dad got a new assignment in the Air Force. And when I went into high school and college, I started to drift away from the faith. I stopped listening to God's word, stopped gathering with his people. I did things that I'm ashamed of. And Jesus found me. And he pulled me back. Just like my pastor said he would. Amen? Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for your son Jesus that you sent to be our shepherd, to lay down his life for us, to protect us from the evil one. We thank you that he has risen from the dead, and even though he has ascended to your right hand, he has sent many servants, including pastors, to be our guides and shepherds, to speak the word to us. We thank you for the, the way they serve, and we pray that you would give us a place always in your body that we might fulfill our purpose through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen.